Hello! So, in the previous video, I broke down the recurring themes of the Remy entries, and in the next video, I'll be announcing the actual winner of the mask. But in this one, I'll be looking at three notable entries that didn't quite win, but are still very much worthy of analysis. <laughs> My good friend and the music producer for these videos, Reese Huntley, helped me choose these runner-ups, so go send him some love by checking out his SoundCloud page. As you can see, the link is here, but it will also be in the description box below. Anyway, let's have a look at these dreams. Now don't get me wrong, none of these are especially astonishing in nature, however they encapsulate some important points I'd like to draw your attention to. This first one's from Films by Bill, and he writes, I was in a donut shop that only sold waffles when red lights started flashing. I thought, hey, wait a minute, this is Remy. I'm dreaming. I then proceeded to fly. And the best part is, I don't own a Remy. Like I said, nothing particularly mind-blowing there, until you start breaking it down and really looking at it on a deeper level. From my perspective, this dream is just a great example of how the mind works on multiple levels simultaneously, and how certain sections block themselves off from one another in order to achieve goals. So in this particular example, first the waking conscious mind um, stored a memory of what the Remy mask was, what its purpose was. Then the subconscious mind thought, hmm, I can use this, and it concocted a plan of deception in a sense, it planned to deceive another level of the mind in order to achieve a goal. So finally, whilst dreaming, the subconscious mind let the dreaming mind recall the waking mind's memories erroneously. That might seem a bit naughty to some. Naughty subconscious, you shouldn't be tricking me like that, you might think. but. Really, it was doing it for good reasons. And so, because of this double-think trickery, the mind very cleverly triggered itself into a self-aware, lucid state. So, round of applause to the mind there. It is um, a master of all things fucked up. Next up, we have an entry from the Ra Ra Rabbit, and he writes, I hear voices in waking life, and one of my voices has been with me for about eight years. I've always been interested to understand why he exists, instead of having doctors just give me medication. I had several lucid dreams where I tried to reach him, but a big sign flashed up in red saying, Access denied. This happened for ages, until one lucid dream I finally managed to find him, and he told me he represented all the things I wished I could be. Confident. Charming. Perfect. Good looking. This has helped me understand myself more. Here we have an example of how lucid dreaming can have a very real positive effect on your waking life. So when someone asks you, what's the point of lucid dreaming? Because I'm sure you've had that before, I know I have. Um, point them in the direction of a dream like this. Because what people really need to understand with lucid dreaming is that it's not just this play thing. You're not just getting lost with the fairies. You're not necessarily giving more power to the dream world. It's an equal exchange. It, it always will be. I mean, you receive messages, you grow from it. You can change your life with lucid dreaming, uh, your waking life. Um, and, and people, the general public, really should know this. Because so many people just see it as um, light-hearted, um, trivial... Um, frivolous fun. Uh, and it can be, but it is more than that too. So with this particular dream, the guy went from a conscious decision in waking life to improve his being. He then brought that intent into the dream world, and whilst there, connected with a previously unreachable part of his psyche. Coming back out of the dream, he brought with him resolutions. He brought with him new ways of thinking. He brought with him new ways of experiencing. 
waking life. Pretty powerful stuff in my opinion. So finally we have Kim Mummy's entry and she writes, My most memorable dream is a bit odd. I had it when I was seven. When I was a girl I had a tree house in the garden. My dream recall starts with me sitting on the slide. As I started to slide, I began to soar up into the sky, flying high above Pendle Hill, where the last witches in England were executed. My feet were in front of me, still in the sliding position, when witches started guiding me into a lake of blood, and I crashed into it. This is the interesting part, right? I then woke up to my first period. This is a great example of a dream rich with symbolism that then carries itself back over into waking life. In a sense, the dream world is overlapping with the waking world with dreams like this. These overlapping dreams, as we'll call them, once again shows how the mind is working on so many different levels simultaneously. The mastermind, or the superconsciousness, or the overseer, or whatever you want to call it, travels along the line infusing each sector of the mind with appropriate levels of understanding. Sometimes literal, sometimes metaphorical, but always useful in one way or another. So here, the superconscious mind gives a symbol to the subconscious mind to prepare it for what it's about to experience in waking life, which will be literal and tangible. It's working on such subtle, nuanced levels that it knows what's right, it knows what's best for each sector of the mind. So it goes along giving a little piece of the puzzle to each. The oddest thing about all of this is that our normal, everyday waking consciousness feels so disconnected, feels so separated from the superconscious mind. And it is so easy to fall into that illusion that there is that divide. And in a sense there is, but in another sense, it's all one. It's all one mind here, you know. It's all working in tandem in its own little way. Some minds work in tandem and gel together more so than others. Some people are very scattered and that will manifest in the form of conflicts within the mind. So, this is another perfect example of what lucid dreaming can be used for. Unification of the mind. This is starting to sound a little bit new agey, isn't it? Apologies for that. But I am talking from a very literal, practical standpoint here. So yeah, living as the overseer, living as the superconscious mind, or at least being aware of the superconscious mind, um, is what lucidity is all about. So I like to move forward in life with the understanding that the mind is complicated. The mind does have a lot of things going on within it, but it is all you. So you can harness the power that lies within, as it were. That sounds cheesy, but that'll do, right? You get me, I think. So that will do for now, thanks for watching, and tune back in the next video where I will be finally announcing the winner of the Remy Mask.